All right, thank you for joining us again for Lunch Break with Pastor. This is going to be for Thursday, and I think Thursday is... That should be the 7th of October. Thank you for joining us. If you want to give to the work of God, you hit the Shop Now button on Facebook. Take you to the Donate Now at mfhlb.com, the Donate Now button. We've been talking about Romans 8, 28. We've been talking specifically about having purpose and things working together for good as promised in that scripture. All things, work to, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are called, the called according to his purpose. We talked about yesterday how his purpose, um, anybody's purpose is possible in it being fulfilled. Um, and I want to go ahead and just read a little bit of the verses from yesterday. Explaining the word purpose was like the showbread, literally was like the bread that was put on display before God. And it was a setting forth, and it was called a purpose bread. And there's seven days it was on a table in the temple. It was offered to God every Sabbath. And of all the days of the week, we know that one day that God definitely set apart calling it a certain name. He called it a day of rest. And for rest to come, purpose has to be fulfilled. God has given us six days, like he took six days to make the, the earth, a purpose so we can enter into a rest. Um, when God's purpose goes forth, things are in motion. And they were in such a motion that God himself said, I said, I will rest. Everything is in motion, just like it should be. Well, let's bring that back to the word purpose. Romans 8, 28. These things are all things that we know, all things work together for good to them that love God, who are the called according to his purpose. Well, what is your purpose for today? It's to enter into God's rest. Let's look a little bit deeper at that. John 10, 10. The thief comes not but to, for to steal, kill, and destroy, but I am come that they might have life and they may have it more abundantly, or life with purpose. Why I'm alive. <laughs> Why I can enter into life that's more abundantly. It's life with purpose. It's why Jesus came so that we could have this. And we already know, he already explained the other things in life that try to take it away. Um, called That Jesus called specifically the work of the thief. But he came. I'm not going to talk about what the thief does because everybody knows what the thief does. <laughs> but he came that we may have and not have these things stolen from us. That we may have our purpose so we can enter into more abundance or his purpose for us, his life that's more abundantly, his Sabbath, his rest. Acts 11.23 This is about Barnabas. This is really cool because Barnabas, his name, I believe, meant son of encouragement, or that's what they called him. Um, he encouraged the early church. In fact, he encouraged the disciples who became the apostles. He encouraged them in the purpose of God that God had set up for them, that you were, they were to be apostles, that they were to be uh, the leaders of his body, the beginning of the early church. And he encouraged them. Um, we know this about Barnabas. He was, he was a man who was able to give to the work of God. He was a man who was able to um, minister to the church and prophesy. And it says this, Acts 11.23. He's visiting a church. Who, when he came and had seen the grace of God upon the people, the favor of God, he was glad. It, 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 this guy was called son of encouragement because it Blessed. It meant a lot to him to do what he was doing. This is a man who found his purpose. He was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart, they would cleave unto the Lord. That means with a true heart, they need to have purpose in their heart. With a true heart, they would cleave 
unto the Lord. I'm going to use one more verse, and this might be a shorter lunch break today, but one more verse about purpose and rest. And it has to do with Romans 8, 28. It has to do with all things working together for good to them that love God, who are the called according to his purpose. Matthew 5, 16 says, remember, we're talking about the called according to his purpose. A lot of us wrestle with that because we don't like to give up our purpose. Especially, it's difficult for us to put our purpose in back. <laughs> Trusting our purpose is going to get met. Trusting we're going to get acknowledged, recognized, thought about. You know, there's an old American saying that's not godly that says, look out for number one. Basically, the idea is nobody else is going to. But God, he promises he is going to, especially if we put his purpose first. We talked about that yesterday, to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And he promises to add all the things unto us. Um, before I show this verse, another favorite verse of mine is, um, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Other people have said it, or different versions have said, if you make the Lord your delight, he will give you the desires of your heart. Because obviously your heart would be a heart that delights in what delights God. But he made us all unique. You like different food than I like. Um, your color is different from my color that's favorite. Your you know, you're different and uniquely different. And that's why you see the word of God say things like delight yourself in the Lord. Make him your delight and he will give you what nobody else knows about. <laughs> he knows our wants, our needs, but he knows our desires. And only he knows how to meet them. The word of God says every perfect gift comes from above, from the father of lights with whom there's no variableness or shadow of turning. In other words, he doesn't lie and he doesn't compromise and he's got every good and perfect gift. And it's something that will delight someone's heart. Not just, okay, yeah, I'm delighted. No, <laughs> he will delight because only God knows how to fulfill those words truly delight somebody. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. That's one of my, that and the one we read yesterday, that I came to give life and that more abundantly. Probably the most, two most thrilling, attractive scriptures that ever drew me to Jesus is that he knows what delights or what I think would delight me and that he promises to fulfill that because he's God. He can do that. Nobody else has to know about it. It's the desire of your heart. Nobody, people don't get to look in your heart. Only God gets to do that or to who you might reveal. In fact, the Bible says man doesn't even know his own heart. So only God gets that deep. I might sh share the last one for tomorrow, but let's see if I can sneak it in here. Matthew 5, 16. Let your light so shine before men. We're going to talk more about that one tomorrow. That's part of your purpose. That's part of the fulfillment of a person when, when they know that all things work together for those that love God who are called according to his purpose. More on the purpose. We'll wind it up tomorrow. Have a great Thursday. Today's the day that we um, have prayer with the pastor. You're welcome to check us out. Um, I'll try to do a post on it to remind people to come and pray the word of God. We've seen unique results happen. It's not what you think it is. It's an awesome experience in freedom, in praying together, but praying God's purposes upon our nation, individuals, ourselves, our country, and what is God's purpose for us all, even today. A kiss to the King.